Hello, this is a video about a laser disc or laser vision, but not just any laser disc. This laser disc. This laser disc is rather special because it has teletext built in. Hmm. Now I'm wondering if you people watching this video actually know what teletext is. You live in the world of mobile phones, smart technology, the internet. Well, this is much, much older technology. Much older indeed. It's sort of like the internet, only entirely non-interactive. But uh, sat just behind this laser disc, however, is my old, well now, in modern terms, old television, circa 2007. It still has a teletext decoder in it. However, it is capable of receiving digital television. It's not got on board um, digital HD, and that's one of the reasons I'm upgrading in the next few days. But I'm upgrading to a telly that won't have teletext on it. So I thought I'd better shoot this video while I still can. So, let's just show you the uh, fun and games involved in even just playing a laser disc. So, over here is my laser disc player, which this one I acquired for the total sum of zero pounds and zero pence. Because I work in the afternoon, it's an academic library. They didn't want this anymore. They dumped it in reception and were going to throw it away. Now, I don't drive, but I got this thing home on my bike. Not easy. So, there's your laser disc in all its glory. This one is um, unfortunately not only very old, circa about 1982 I think this came out. No, 81. Uh, it is also starting to rot, which is another reason why I have to in some way, some way preserve its contents. So, 12 inches of disc rather than your more standard 5 inches worth of... Um, So this being a sort of professional laser disc player, it doesn't uh, auto play. I have to reach over and hit play. That will turn on the television and get back in that direction. Now I will uh, can't work out if we're muted at the moment. We're not. Well, we'll leave it running for this bit, but I will mute it after that because I don't want to be um, I don't want to be content grabbed by the uh, YouTube police on this video. So this is the marvelous BBC video logo of the early 1980s, and I'll, I'll let you hear a brief a brief mention of Mr. David Attenborough as he comes on. There he is, David Attenborough, the man, the legend, the expert. Welcome to a completely new kind And we'll of say goodbye to David, because this video isn't about him. Great man though he is. This video is about that button I'm pointing at right now on my remote control. So we'll hit that button called text, and there it is. CFAX, preserved forever. Well, as long as this disc keeps playing, and you can find a television of this vintage, there it is, a special version of CFAX. And instead of ordinary CFAX that would bring you news, sport, various bits of entertainment and what have you, this is dedicated CFAX, uh, described by the Laserdisc as the world's first video book with CFAX. And uh, there's, there's also, and I can't really take advantage of it on here, this particular player, it has dual soundtrack, so if you don't like David Attenborough's voice, well, for a start, you're a very strange person if you don't, uh, you can even turn him off in, and just listen to the sound of birdsong, but uh, we don't really want any sound from the Laserdisc itself today, we just want to zoom in and make a record of as much of this teletext as we still can before I um, wave goodbye to this TV that's capable of uh, playing it. So. That's your front page. 
and we've got an index page with instructions about the Laserdisc on page 102 so a bit like going to a website I have to dial up numbers instead of URLs I might even close the curtains to see if we can make this thing look a bit more clearer on the video yeah, I think that's helping Uh, we get this so we've got the whole picture let's see well uh, so yeah that's an information page so we'll go back to the and there are subtitles so all of David's Attenborough's commentary will come up in subtitle form none, none of this built into the uh, player stuff that you have with DVD these days, oh no it had to be on the disc so we can look up various birds over on 10... Oh, I was trying to do 103 so there's all your details about the heron in a little three page magazine that will sort of circulate Lives in water meadows and margins, marshes, rivers, lakes, ponds, estuaries, and sea coasts. Frequent visitor to quiet garden ponds. Now, we don't have a pond, but somewhere, somewhere else in Cambridge, someone definitely does. Because I've seen herons fly past my window. Never seen them land nearby, but I've definitely seen them fly past. If you actually want to see them, you kind of have to head down to the, the river, which is only about a mile away from here. A harsh fanark. Is Mainly fish, particularly eels, voles. Nests in colonies between February and May. Usually lays three to five eggs. One of the largest birds in the UK at um, 36 inches almost a meter so that's your heron and I'm guessing it just goes 104 and there's loads and loads of these so there's your mute swan for example voice not really mute at all calls only when excited a variety of grunting sounds hissing and explosive snorts I'll leave this to, for yourself to read, but let's see, length. Oh, actually bigger than the heron. 155 centimetres. One and a half metres. Though presumably they measure length as... From the... Yeah. I, would, wouldn't, I wouldn't describe a heron as a, 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 a swan as a tall bird, but I'd call a heron quite a tall bird. Ah. That sounds like an Amazon delivery. Hopefully someone's about to answer the door, because I'm trying to make this video. So there's your mallard duck. Uh, we'll let this work its way round to page one again, because the most interesting thing about all these birds seems to be the size of them when I look at these lists of facts. Ducks quack loudly but have conversational calls for young a young drake is a weak harsh quack. Others grunt whistle used in the club. Fair enough. Fifty eight centimetres. It's your sparrow hawk. I think we've had a sparrow hawk in our garden. I've never seen it myself, uh, but my dad has. Uh, what else have we got here? Kestrel. Now, kestrel, I've only ever seen these hovering. When I went on a bike ride earlier this year, uh, down the Cambridgeshire busway, one was hovering high up, and I managed to get a photograph of it on my um, zoom lens camera. And it's only when I then digitally zoomed in on that photograph could I tell it was a kestrel. 
So we'll let that work its way around, I guess. Um, and tell us the size of the kestrel. Not sure how many of these pages to put in this video, and how long to make this video, but uh, certainly wanted to make some kind of record of all of this, because I myself won't have access to it soon. Although, weirdly, it will still exist on this disc. I just will not own a television capable of uh, playing it. Well, I can play the tele I can play the video part of it, even on a modern television, because uh, that Amazon, video Amazon uh, delivery that's just arrived is a SCART to HDMI converter, so I can take the back of this baby and plug it into the HDMI of a modern television. It remains to be seen how good the analog to digital conversion is on such uh, pieces of kit, but uh, we shall see. The hobby. Oh, that's another um, bird of prey, that is. Uh, might go back to the index in a sec. Don't want to make this video too long. I mean, I find this stuff interesting. But I have noticed that on YouTube there's very few videos about Teletext being on Laserdisc, so... Maybe people don't find it as interesting as I do. 101. So the birds are listed all the way from 103 all the way up to 172. Index of list, 185. So that's just basically a list of what is on the disc elsewhere and what the page numbers are. Order of appearance. Ah, now this is more in line with the chapters of the disc, because on the chapters of the disc they're sort of grouped together, so chapter one is water birds, pheasant, diurnal, birds of prey, and chapter two for example is pigeons, cuckoo, owls, and they're all sort of listed by sort of similar species. So if we go back to 101 again there's our credits. God this is like a menu of a DVD. Back in the back in the days when DVDs didn't have many options on the menu and the media companies hadn't quite grasped the concept of special features a special feature would be credits <laughs> and it would be the people who put the DVD together see facts test text all written by Mike Kendall film librarian at the BBC Natural History Unit subtitles by Bill Northwood uh, see facts design and editing by Ian Worthwood and Georgie Howard technical cooperation by Peter Chick Oh, very appropriately named, Peter Chick. About CFAX. So it even, even has a nice little marketing page of CFAX. Oh, I remember this page. When they, did, um, when they used to do pages from CFAX, and between programmes they would show CFAX, this page would arrive with um, regular intervals. I think this camera's not quite straight, so let's try and get it a little straighter for the end of this video. There we go. Several hundred pages of information of all kinds. News, sport, finance, travel, entertainment, weather, much, much more. Test pages. Oh god, I remember these as well. Back when teletext was a thing, there was a couple of pages of teletext that were purely there for test purposes. And this page, for example, has got every single character in teletext, even down to these ones down here, at the bottom, which are graphical characters. And they did do pictures, they did do art on here. They haven't actually attempted to do art of birds on here, I notice. So I can hit red to get 199, and that's the clock cracker. And the clock cracker is basically there 
to tell you whether you've got a good television signal. So even though this laser disc does look rotted, it is still giving us a good signal from the teletext. Uh, it almost might be interesting to play the other side of the disc and see if both sides are giving us some um, equally good um, signal from the teletext. So that's one of the nice tricks of this TV. Back in the old days, back in the old days of teletext, um, you could mix that picture with that picture, but you couldn't do this. Because this television's from 2007, you can do nifty tricks like this. So let's take out uh, side one. So we lose video on the left, but we've still got teletext because that's stored in the memory of the um, TV. And uh, let's swap this round. Alexa, turn bedroom light on. That's really annoyed some of you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. We need to be able to see things in videos. Alexa, turn bedroom light off. I shall reposition there and hit play. See, at the moment, if I tried to dial up any other Teletext page, it won't come up because the disc isn't playing it. But once we get the disc playing, so we're waiting. Don't need anything at all, just that opening logo should be plenty. There you go. So now I can go 101 again, and there it all is. So if we go to the clock cracker on side two, yep, rock solid signal. So yeah, there is some rotting on this laser disc, and there's definitely there because I can see it visually with my own eyes. But the actual signal is still coming through pretty well. Which is just as well, because I wouldn't have been able to make this video properly otherwise. I do own some laser discs that are sadly not playing very well at all now. Uh, I've been through every single one of my 5 inch laser discs recently and classified them as to how playable they are. What I have not done, and I probably should have done in lockdown because boy did I have some time on my hand, was go through all my 12 inch laser discs and see how well they play. Uh, guess I'll get round to that eventually. But uh, so yeah, there's the clock cracker working fine, and there's the main engineering test page working fine, and uh, the actual teletext itself is identical on side two, two side one, and side two here starts with uh, the ascenter birds, warblers, crests, flycatchers, and thrushes, and the first one we're looking at now is the Dunnock. So there you are, that is a a laser disc. Alexa, turn bedroom light on. With the added extra of CFAX. Thank you and goodbye.